<laughs> Can you take her, please? <laughs> Sorry. This guy leaves like two hours after he gets here, so Ugh. I have to have to go. Say goodbye. I'm gonna be up at seven thirty tomorrow morning, so seven thirty. Yeah, it's not like oh, I, I get can... up at six every day. Uh, what? What do you mean every day? You don't work every day, so <laughs> that doesn't keep me from getting. <laughs> I was out. like, okay, I will. Yeah. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, um, I have this, like, picnic that I'm supposed to go to with my parents, <clears throat> and, like, my entire schedule is nocturnal anyway, and they're like, oh, yeah, you know, just just kind of come over at 7.30, we're gonna get some sandwiches, and I then think I went up. the wrong way. <laughs> How do you go the wrong way? Because I, I wasn't paying because uh, of the cops? We were sitting. <laughs> That's weird. Okay, run. Alright, um, gosh, it's funny, I'm like... I'm watching this and I'm interested, but I know I probably shouldn't at the same time because I just got a PlayStation 3. Oh, you did? Finally. <laughs> yeah, I'm borrowing, long-term borrowing um, Chris's PlayStation 3 because he doesn't need it anymore. He has a PS4. True. So I got to go through the whole first-time setup process, you know, nine years after it was released or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the interface so, you have, is... so you have a PSN account and stuff now? I do now, yes. So yeah, we got to get me added on it. So it's different um not bad but different like i've had weird experiences with consoles over the last few few weeks because i got to hang out with sean and i played on the xbox one and even though you can get a, an xbox one for literally 300 dollars now which is insane um i don't want it because it's so buggy it's so crap not good um like i i don't know if other people care or notice these things but the frame rate will stutter when i'm moving through menus um, I'll try to load the achievement bar, and it'll take a good, like, 30 seconds. I was playing the Master Chief Collection, and I didn't have any real bugs with that, because we were doing campaign only, but, um, what I did have issues with is we would find terminals, for example, inside of the game, and then it would chunk us out to Halo Waypoint, or whatever the new version's called, Halo Subscription Channel. And then it would be like, nope, sorry, I can't load this content at, at this time. And I'd be like, what are you talking about? And so then I would... the internet is not quite good enough or I, well, something, whatever reason. I don't know what it was, but it didn't do anything. It just didn't, it didn't show a screen. It didn't show any kind of content. And then I would jump out, and I would jump back in, and then I would jump out, and then he'd jump in with his account, and then it would work. And it had nothing to do with sign-ins for the account. It just decided to work that time because <laughs> we did it multiple times with each of the different um, terminals. I don't know, man. Like, I didn't have a whole ton of experience with the 360 interface, and I have I have no experience with the One interface. Sure. But I did have an original Xbox, and it was a piece of shit. <laughs> like, it was just a horrible console. That's interesting. I put up with it because I wanted to play like Halo and Halo Two. Yeah. See, I don't and know. I the 360 was my gold standard for a console. Like, the interface was logical. Everything was. Really smooth. Like, I liked it. I don't know. And I think you'll like PS3 a lot. Because it's so simple. Maybe. Like, the interface itself, like, just the home screen kind of situation, it's just, it's different. There's nothing normal for me yet about a PlayStation. Yeah. So, like, I'm being way more critical than most people would. So I, oh, yeah. Obviously. <laughs> I'll switch over to, like, the networking tab or whatever, and I'd touch the PS, PSN icon, and all of a sudden it's like, lag, lag, load, all of a sudden the background is, like, totally different. I'm like... <laughs> Like, I, I expected that we would be smooth. I do think the store has always been a weak part. Like, when you when you head to the PlayStation Store, mm. it takes too long to load. And I don't think the interface... Like, they did, they actually updated the interface about yeah. two years ago, I guess. Yeah. And neither of them were good. Like, I don't like either of the interface for the store. Because mm. it's just slow. And I think there's better ways to do it. There's better ways to organize the content. There's better ways to show you what you're looking for. Yeah. Like, it's not good at being intuitive. Of figuring out what you're looking for and taking care of it for you. I, as a brand new user, I saw in the sidebar that there was a deal that I could like get PlayStation Gold yeah. or whatever for like a couple weeks for free. But they didn't actually home it in. They weren't just like, "Hey, by the way, now you have it. You should use it." I was just like, "Oh, this is an option if you want to sign up for it." Right. And then you know, I don't have a Vita. I don't have a Vita. Um, I called it Vita for so long for some reason. Um, I don't have that console, but, you know, they do a good job of integrating that, I see. But um, at the same time... Yes and no. no they don't. <laughs> you know? I was expecting that little crate thing he'd grab to fall. Usually it would. Yeah. That's a hell of a jump. Like, 
He just jumped with one arm. I couldn't get like four feet lateral. <laughs> um, it's actually funny. I was watching, not to get too off topic, but I was watching Furious Seven last night. Oh, you saw it? Yeah. Uh, don't talk to me about it. I well, here's the thing: it's like uh, this isn't gonna ruin it for you, but it is kind of a spoiler. Um, there's a guy in there that you think is gonna be a villain, and he isn't. And I was so surprised for a series that does a really good job of being very predictable. <laughs> like, it, he, he didn't follow the normal tropes. Right. And I know I got the recommendation from you to watch all seven, but I don't know if I'm sold on it yet. Dude, I I was behind. I hadn't seen six yet. And seven, seven just came out, so I wanted to see it. So um, I went in Redbox 6 on, like, Wednesday. Yeah. Tuesday or whatever. Um... Was not super impressed. It was one of the weaker movies, I feel like. But the end, like, the end sequence, the, like, the big climax sequence was amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, this whole, it was this whole, like, the the most unbelievable part, obviously, uh, there's a lot of unbelievable part of it, but the most unbelievable part was that this plane was running down a runway for literally, like, 20 minutes. (laughs) But it was amazing. Like... The shit that happened during that scene was crazy. <laughs> well, I, I, like, I was all in at that point. I finished rewatching. Did I go the wrong way? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure where you went. Uh, I finished rewatching Maybe the Mission Impossible down. series um, this week, and so I'm, I'm more in tune with what a set piece is now. Yes, like I get it, um, and it's it's okay. Like there's great, great set pieces in Seven, but there's so much like cheese in my opinion, and like the dialogue is so like puffed up. Young male, yeah, and I'm, and these guys have all been doing that, that movie for fifteen years, and I'm fine with it. Like I don't like they do their they do it well. Oh, you know what? They I'm deliver their lines way. and they do a good job of like not appearing like it's the same thing every single time. But at the same time, like I don't know, like the best fans for this movie, in my opinion, are like parents and parents. Because they they don't care. They I think the best. Be so I, I think the the target audience for that is probably and this and this is the with every movie, all seven of them over the past fifteen years. The target audience is like fifteen to twenty. Okay, well, yeah. so that audience and keeps the growing up, and then <laughs> and then the the new kids are there. And I they're guess. watching like the next movie because everybody that I imagine would just take it at face value are like wearing you know paintball jerseys for shirts and hats Ooh. on sideways and like. Trust Jeans me. that are a little too baggy. Like, it's just kids who just think of themselves as, like, really good at COD. And I've never been able to interface <laughs> with those kids. That's true. I agree with that. <laughs> so I don't know if, like... I'm, and yeah, I don't think, um... For our specific demographic that we are, I don't think Fast and Furious is for us. Okay. But I've always been a fan. Yeah. I've liked them. Everybody I talk to is a fan. And, again, hands. it's like... I watched Mission Impossible 1 through 4, four. or 5 at this point. And five's not out yet. Okay, yeah, it's on its way. So yeah, goes goes four, goes four. And it was one of those where it's like, they were good. Yeah, that's it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I very much enjoyed them. Didn't make me think. Didn't make. And I know they're not there for that. But I guess what I mean is like, I think one. If I missed them, I one wouldn't might miss be them. right on the edge of being a classic. Really? But really, it, at the, think of when that movie came out. Like, I did that movie come out late nineties. Yeah, it was early nineties. It was like. I, well, it was pretty special for the time. It's been enjoyable. Like again, the the action holds up and, and things like that. But like the first one was so it it felt so classic. And then my favorite out of the series was actually two. Two was a thrill ride, even though it was wrapped in like early two thousands silliness. Yeah, like it was still such a great film. And then three, it really did feel like a rehash. Like. I wasn't as impressed anymore. And I don't know what I'm looking for. I See, think. I think that might be a product, though, of I like you how watching he has, it. He has a it flashlight on his dick. <laughs> yeah, basically. He's not even bothering to use his hands. Well, you can't climb around if you're holding a flashlight. We well, can put it through his teeth. <laughs> you, it wouldn't be very useful. So you think then. it's a problem with watching him now that they're old? Or I think in not, not that they're old. I think it's in succession. Interesting. One and two, I don't believe we're that far apart from each other. I, I always they felt were. two they was weren't. kind of like, eh, yeah. take it or leave it. Huh. Three was really good, but I think that was after like a ten year absence. I don't know. Three was the first like Abrams big breakout directing movie. Okay. Because before that, he was he did Alias and Lost. Okay. That's all he did. Well, like then, after that, he started doing movies. I guess I need to understand this because 
I had something similar happen with Terminator. But I feel like that's Terminator's fault. I watched all five in a row. Four, five? Four. Um, four. Four, Salvation. Yep. I yeah, watched, I watched all awesome. four in a row. By the time Salvation was in front of my eyeballs, I was dull to all the explosions and, and destruction. Like, at that point, I'd been... I'd watched it for, like, six hours, so it wasn't even interesting anymore. But, like, it's still a good movie. Like, th- yeah. three... Everybody can tell you that three sucks. Mm-hmm. But four, even though I was kind of, like, blurred out from all the action scenes, I still really enjoyed it. So I don't yeah. know if it's the fault of the sequels or simply a fault of me binging <laughs> when I shouldn't be. I don't know if taking I think break that's something to worry about, kind of, when... When a series, like, lasts for so long amount of time... Um... I just, here, here's a good example. It's like, why am I able to watch Dragon Ball Z, the most repetitive, <laughs> one of the most repetitive yeah. animes in my opinion? I'm able to watch that, to, you know, five hours a day and not, and like literally go and watch it again tomorrow and keep that going. Whereas with movies, it's harder for me to enjoy it over and over again. Like, I think I, it I has to do with just how they're designed, how they're written, like. Most movies aren't really meant to be consumed over and over again. Um, some are, and, and those typically you'll hear people watching over and over again. But then there are movies that's like, I watch it once, and it's like, that was really good, I'm, but I'm probably never going to watch it again. Yeah. Maybe I will in five years. That's interesting. Okay, so I get, I get a lot of value out of returning to series that I love. So, yes. for example... I did, I'm finishing, I'm 90% on a replay of Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary. And I stopped playing it for a while because I was like, I've played Halo four How or five times? times now. Yeah. And, like, I still enjoy it, but it's it's shown its age at this point. Like, mm-hmm. I, I don't need to ever really play it again for a good five, ten years. But I might at some point, too, because, I, like, I guess I'm much more apt to dive into a new universe as a whole and then enjoy everything in it, than just enjoy something singular. Yes. So, for example, I was going to ask to borrow Uncharted the series. Not just, like, you know, let me borrow Uncharted 2 because it was really well-reviewed. Like, give me one. Give, yeah, me, yeah, give yeah. me the ones and let me go through this. And then I'm going to look up online, are there any comics for Nathan Drake? Are there any, like, short films for Nathan Drake? I'll get into it. But I can't, like, do it singularly. Like, for example, I don't know if I could just watch Mission Impossible 1 without watching them all. Right. So I don't know if I'm going to fall into the trap of literally watching all six Furiouses after this. Because, <laughs> like, these characters, they're interesting enough that I kind of want to see how they've grown. Because you can tell that, like, they really kind of congealed into this, like, family unit, not only as actors, but as, you know, the people in it. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I'm with you there. Like, I don't understand. Like, it completely baffles me when someone is, like... They don't really have a game collection because they buy a game, they play it, and yes. then they like trade it in. Yes. Um, especially for a game you enjoy and you really like, I can't fathom that because three or four years down the road, I want to play that series again. And then I start from the first one and That's I right. play all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I can't even count how many times I've played Metal Gear Solid. One, two. I usually skip three. You screwed and then play up, four. by the way. They caught you quick. Oh, I didn't know it was a. Uh... Ooh, he took care of that guy. No, I hear you. I, I sat down one time and I wrote out all the different franchises that I really love. Mega yeah. Man, Mech Warrior, Warhammer. Like, and, and then I just made sure that I knew as much as I could and experienced as much as I could of the universes. I, I can't, like... I don't know. Like, if... The, uh, I, I don't even know my own point. Like, do I like it when there's a lot of content in the series or don't I? Because I'm but complaining eventually, on both doesn't, sides. Eventually, do, isn't there too much content? Like, at some point, there's a line. Tell us right below us. Like, if you, like, say you really like Dragon Ball Z, not mm. Kai, Dragon Ball Z, mm. and it's like, how many times can you really start from the beginning and watch it all, sure. like, 360 episodes over? Yeah, alright, you're right. That... E- even once a year. If you watched one episode a day, it would take you over a year <laughs> to watch it, and then you wouldn't be able to start the next time again. Yeah. Alright, so I-, I think I'll amend what I was going to say. As long as... As long as... Oh gosh. I mean, what... Because what am I saying here that isn't obvious for everyone? As long as the first one, my first experience with a franchise grabs me enough, I'll consume everything. But... 
it's the difference for me right now between um, Lost and uh, Dexter. Dexter, I kind of got into and never stopped. And Lost, I had to like work at it. Like I'm, yeah. I'm halfway through season two and I'm not going back. Like I, I can't do it. I, for some reason, it hasn't grabbed me the way everybody else gets grabbed. And eh, I, the fact that there are so many extra episodes, I'm not going to get through it. But as an aside. There are other shows on Netflix where I was like, you know what? I don't like this very much, but I'm going to finish it. I watched <laughs> both seasons of The Office UK on Netflix, even though it was, like, not very good. Yeah. I still watched it all because there's only two seasons. <laughs> like, they did a good job of making it enough where I'm like, I'm going to finish this. That's funny. This is it. That's how I got into An Idiot so Abroad. Um, it was this travel log. I was a super cynical guy who doesn't want to travel. And, like... It's good enough where I'm like, you know, there's only six episodes. I might as well watch it. <laughs> like, that's just the completionist in me. True. Um, I don't know. I'm really... It, it might have to do with just how I am or has to do with the filmmaker side of me. But when it comes to like TV series and stuff, like I really have to not like it to mm. not finish it. Sure. Like, that bar's low. Like, if it's not, like, ridiculously long, I'll finish it, and I'll watch the whole thing. Um, I'm trying to think of an example. Well, while you do, I must comment that Nathan Drake, if he really climbed this much, he would have callous hands like crazy and massive chest muscles. Oh, yeah. Because he is climbing all the time, apparently. Oh, there's a switch. I also didn't entirely notice how HUDless this game is. Yeah, which is actually, I think, really nice. It's a subtle thing. Does it ever pull you into third per- uh, first person? First person? Yeah. Um, no, I don't think so. There's very, if at all, there's very uh, little time when you have to do first person. Yeah. That's because Drake is, you know, he's a, he's the starring character. You want to see him sure. do everything. Another movie I watched this week was terrible. Um, didn't need to exist. And it? I'm not really sure why I got all the praise that it did, even though I can tell... That it's a wacky visual trip. Um, so, screw you, the Big Lebowski. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I never understood it. Um, that movie gets a lot of praise. and I, I mean, as far as direction and like writing, I, I understand why. I, I can appreciate it. It's not, not but my thing. I when think. a movie... When I can literally watch a movie and the characters are the same as they were when they started and finished... Fair enough. I get That's... so angry. <laughs> I'm just like nothing's happened here. It's like I mean, when that I review on the kind of story you're trying to tell, but um... <clears throat> why are you telling a story if the character doesn't progress in any way? Because usually then the stories are not about the main character; it's about something else. If you, unless there's some big social commentary in the Big Lebowski that I missed, <laughs> it was just about being a bro and shit happens, and you're with your friends. I think that is the accurate... <laughs> oh, that, that is what Big Lebowski is. It's just shit happens. Yeah. I have friends like that. I have friends who would be like, dude, that's my life. And I'd be like, I know, and I hate your life for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost finished with my Tom Cruise movie kick. I've mm-hmm. got Top Gun, um, Last Samurai, like Last maybe Samurai one Solo. other to watch. Have you seen Last Samurai before? I've seen Last Samurai okay. back when it came out. I haven't seen Top Gun, though. So. Ooh, that's it's pretty good. I think it's... I haven't seen it in a long time. I'm going to assume it's probably aged a lot. I felt it like it was aged when I saw it, which is probably in the 90s. Interesting. So, I'm trying to think take that as you on my will. List. Um, have you seen Edge of Tomorrow yet? Or, uh, oh, God, of course. Live, Die, Repeat, See, which that... I prefer the na- as that name. Yeah, well, yeah. Wait, no. Edge of Tomorrow was my preferred name, actually. Really? Yeah. I like I don't know. I like it. Live, Die, Repeat, like... Okay. I feel like Live, Die, Repeat is a better representation of what the movie is. Sure. And it's also... The movie's based on a uh, Japanese book. Which I almost downloaded. Which... Because it sounded cool. I'm trying to remember what it's called. It's All There Is Is Kill. And it just sounds closer to that. Actually, I don't think that's the name. It's close, though. All You Are Is Kill, I think is what it's called. All You Have Is Kill. It was very, like, weird English when it was translated. Right, yeah. Um, I want to read it though It's supposed to be really good I If you read it Let me know See live, Like Edge of Tomorrow Was perfect I loved it For me And that was the second Perfect in a row For Tom Cruise That I'd had in a while Which was Oblivion 
Oblivion to me was perfect. I was kind of iffy on Oblivion. But uh, both times? Yeah. Holy shit. I don't man. want them to make any other tie-ins or sequels because it was so good on its own. And yet I'm craving more more of that content. <laughs> I can't win. Also, you can't win because I don't know what I you're fucking doing Fucking jump. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah! yeah! <laughs> <laughs> if this was left for dead, you'd be dead. This, this is suspenseful. There we go. Wow, okay. <laughs> um, but anyway, like, how, how do you handle that situation? Like, I don't think they could ever do a second Oblivion or a second Live, Die, Repeat that would be, like, the Dark Knight of the franchise. Like, Oh, no. I don't think I don't think those movies set themselves up for sequels, though, did they? No. But I want more content. I just want yeah. it to be good. I, just, I think Live, Die, Repeat could definitely have, like, a comic prequel. Well, I'll tell you this, because I really thought it through. The best they could do is have a prequel where it's all about um, how the when when the invasion started. Yeah, whatever the first war that made her the ultimate badass. Yeah, like perfect. Well, yeah, there's perfect reason you to could have a you could do a movie that's not necessarily the same kind of story because you could just have you could literally just do a, a more movie about the invasion, mm-hmm. but then you could also do her live die repeat movie. Yeah, oh, which yeah. is just when she had the power. And it's, stuff. She it was the battle of her done. Doing, Drake? Like it would be awesome to see her back. Because she's she's an awesome character, yeah. And the battle over done gets talked about in reference, but you don't see it. You don't even see it in flashbacks. So like that's that seems ripe for more information. Now the only thing that could actually, which I liked about the movie, that they didn't they didn't weigh it down with shit like that. Yeah, but it also leaves that open where you could do it later, which is really cool. The thing that kind of stood out to me about Oblivion, I guess, was the art design. And the soundtrack, which means that I don't necessarily need um, much more than that to enjoy a sequel. Like, if they did the same in-universe where, like, I don't know, they're rebuilding after the Tet blew up or, right. you know, when the invasion first starts. I mean, c- come on. Like, I'm having flashbacks to a, a series that I can't remember the name of, but, like, when the hero, like, at the very end, when the hero discovers that he's now a clone, like, that's so cool. There's so much to do with that. Okay. 